Uh, we have with us uh, Gaurav Karod, uh, Country Manager, India, Intelsat. What are the challenges uh, uh, that you are seeing in the SATCOM industry? Yeah, I, I think the primary challenge that we've seen uh, uh, and has been discussed over the last couple of days with this forum uh, and the India SATCOM event is that there is uh, a demand supply gap in the industry. There is a huge amount of demand, uh, not just from the government of India for its Digital India project, but also from the private uh, industry, the commercial industry, where lots of new applications are coming in like maritime, aero uh, broadband, uh, consumer broadband. So the demand is huge, and the supply from the Indian satellite provider, which is ISRO, is, is known. Um, they have launched several satellites, but despite that, the demand is far outpacing the supply. And therefore, the, the key issue that the industry has brought out is that if there is a deficit in the demand uh, and the supply cannot meet it, uh, then some of the foreign satellites, which are already available and have beams over India, they should be allowed to be operated in India so that the demand can be met. It's not necessary that the current supply of foreign satellites can also meet the demand, but uh, as time progresses, we will come to know if the demand can be met or not. There are 20,000 villages which are still to be connected, and uh, I'm told that uh, majority of them will go for uh, satellite connectivity. So how do you see connectivity to these villages which are remote or in hilly terrain? or in areas where it is inaccessible? Yeah, so uh, BBNL was here, uh, uh, and so were a lot of the government departments. Typically, even with a contention ratio uh, of 1 is to 10, uh, each of these uh, gram panchayats would need about 300 megabits uh, of capacity. And you say 20,000, but even if it is less, uh, that still amounts to a huge amount of capacity. So just for the northeast part of India, uh, the estimates are that they, the requirement is for about 15 gigabits of capacity. The current set of ISRO satellites, including the GSAT-29, which was launched uh, two, three days back, uh, would be able to supply only about two and a half gigabits uh, out of the 15 uh, odd, uh, gigabits required. So there is still a huge requirement. There are other areas of India like Andaman, Nicobar, uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Lakshadweep. Uh, a lot of those areas, the demand can be met by ISRO, but there would be certain areas where they would still need uh, foreign satellites to help, and that that is exactly the deficit they are talking about. Regarding foreign satellites, uh, there is a big question mark: uh, when, 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 when will it get open? So, any thoughts from the policymakers on what's what is their direction or what's their approach to foreign satellites? Yes, uh, so there has been a lot of debate, uh, a lot of discussions, including uh, uh, in the presence of ISRO, um, along with TOT and WPC and TRAI, that, uh, uh, and especially in light of the NDCP, which has a clear uh, uh, two or three paragraphs written about satellite communication, the importance of satellite communi communications to reach out to the rural uh, population. Uh, there is a need definitely to revamp the SATCOM policy and the uh, Telecom Secretary, Madam uh, Aruna uh, Sundarajan, she very kindly mentioned that in her address today, uh, that uh, the SATCOM policy needs to be relooked at, uh, need to, needs to be revised along with DOS and inputs from them. So there is indeed hope from the regulatory uh, uh, circles that there would be a change in the, in the policy such that it will allow foreign satellite operators to at least try and meet the demand. Uh, there have been also industry concern with respect to in-flight uh, connectivity opening up or formulating of the policy. Any development on that front? So no real development in the last couple of days while this event was going, but uh, uh, there was uh, an open forum uh, hosted by ISRO and uh, DOS about 15 days back, 10 to 15 days back. Uh, we hear that uh, we hear from the regulators, DOT and WPC, that uh, the, the file has moved to the law ministry on the policy. Uh, hopefully, the policy should come out very soon. And uh, there is uh, some sort of a dialogue which the industry had with ISRO in that meeting, uh, where it came out uh, that ISRO may be willing to look at uh, foreign satellite capacity where they cannot fulfill the demands of the, this new market. So 2019 looks bright for the satellite industry? 
Uh, indeed, meaning I, I would always uh, be an optimist uh, uh, and say that yes, there are new markets opening up. Uh, while ISRO is doing a great job in launching their own HTS satellites, they've already announced the K band, GSAT 20, etc. But uh, there is still this demand in the India market which um, is encouraging for the foreigners. And how do you see high throughput satellites uh, which are focused on the Indian market? So already there are uh, a few KU band high throughput satellites uh, available from foreign satellite operators over India. Uh, ISRO has its own uh, KU cross K and the new fleet of K cross K satellites coming up. So there is ample availability of uh, high throughput satellites over India and would be increased as time goes on. Uh, but as I said, the demand is there and therefore it should be good for everyone. Thanks, Gaurav. Thanks for speaking to DJ Analysis.